Ebby was a unique individual. From the time she was born, she was full of joy. She had many friends. In our family, I'm kind of the fixer and the record keeper. Just a few months after Ebby disappeared is when I decided to make this timeline. This is where it first began, the timeline. This is her first poster they put up, the first flyer. I may be old fashioned and old in age, but I became a kind of a sleuth on social media. This down here is the week after October 25th and the 30th when she disappeared and when her car was found. And all in between are things that I had heard from rumor or I actually knew for a fact where she was or who she was with. October 4th through 8th, before she disappeared, she stayed with us for four days. But during these four days, it, she was very different. Uh, I could tell she was troubled. She was more distant. She said, Grandma, would you braid my hair like you used to when I was a little girl? And I said, oh, sure, Ebby. And I began to French braid her hair. I didn't realize it was the last time I would ever touch her. About two weeks ago, I received a very hurtful prank phone call. An adolescent female voice said, Grandma, help me, help me, please. I'm in trouble, I don't know where I am. I have no idea whose rule book allows them to do something so cruel. It's been six years since my granddaughter was killed. It's very distressing knowing that the person or persons who caused this death of my granddaughter are walking the streets. I'm hoping Dr. Phil can keep her in the public eye. I feel like something good is gonna come from this. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And I, I'm so sorry for your loss. Why have you chosen now to speak out? I wanted to speak in the beginning, but the law enforcement, the authorities said, would you give us a chance to do our job? And so, you know, don't be talking about it because you don't know who's out there. And so I honored that. I didn't want to muddy the waters with, well, here's her mother and here's her father and here's friends. And so I just remained quiet all this time. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like the impetus for this investigation has really become private. Yes. It's become family driving this yes. instead of law enforcement driving this. After all that you've put together, what's the most glaring inconsistency you think needs to be focused on in this case at this point? I think the most glaring discrepancy, as you say, at this point now is that it seems like, uh, and not Tommy Hudson, but like the Little Rock authorities have just sort of given up and her name isn't spoken. And I haven't even, vis even visited with the newest detective because the last thing I heard was about, well, they just kind of, you know, Ebby put herself down there. They've kind of, you know, figured that. And, and you just want to scream, there's no way Little Ebby did that. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.